do I need to? Oh, it's on. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Is it morning or afternoon? Oh, it's afternoon. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Pam Lewis Rudden. I'm from Plutonic Group Sinks, based out of London. Uh, we are a sink licensing agent agency. I'm, I'm the agent, and my primary goal as an agent is to service music supervisors um, who work across all media, television, film, advertising, video games, podcasts, anything that needs music, to service them with music that they require for their projects. Um, and that takes on a lot of additional steps and additional information that is needed um, to make sure that I service them with the correct music. Um, otherwise, I will be blackballed and put out of town um, sent to Siberia. And uh, so to avoid this, these, I've made a short list of, I want to say mistakes uh, that a lot of people make because, you know, mu the music business is very relaxed. We're very chill. You know, we're all just kind of just doing our thing. But we kind of forget that this is a business and there are different people um, who work a certain way and some etiquette that has kind of been lost in the process of us evolving and growing in music business. So my first mistake uh, is lack of education. Um, I feel, a, or I, I found that a lot of people, instead of using Google, will come to me and ask me questions about what they should do um, when it's really up to you as a business owner, because you either own your label or you own your uh, uh, music. Um, there are certain things that you have to have in place before you approach anyone, whether it's a label, a blogger, um, radio, publishing, sync agent. Um, the great thing about these conferences is that you can come and ask questions. This is the time to ask us questions that I normally during the course of the day would not have time to do. Um, so educate yourself on the clearance and licensing process. Know the definition and difference between a master recording and, a publish and publishing. Know what one stop means. Make sure you are registered as a songwriter and publisher with your performing rights organization, which if you're from the UK, you know is uh, PRS, and your CMO uh, is PPL. Um, and even that, just having that alone will put you ahead of most, um, especially since we have a plethora of music being released on a daily basis, and people who are trying to enter to the uh, realm of sync uh, to get better footing, knowing these type of uh, definitions of what music is and what we as sync people need, uh, knowing if you, what you own, how much you own, and especially if you have co-writers or you're representing other people, um, what your splits are, because that's very important. Um, if a music, music supervisor feels that you understand what it takes to clear a song, the more likely they are to trust that they'll be able to clear your song should the opportunity arise. So having that basic, knowing the difference. So does everyone know One Stop and, and or Easy Clear? Is there anyone in here who doesn't know? Okay, so One Stop means that you own both sides, the masters and the publishing. You are the rights owner. And so you as a One Stop rights owner makes it a lot easier for me as a sync agent to pitch to uh, a supervisor where they're one looking for one stops because they don't have a lot of time and they want to know that this is going to clear on both sides. There's not going to be any kind of um, searching for people to find to clear their 2% of a song. Okay, Easy clear means that there is going to be one extra step, that there's when I have an easy clear song, that means that somebody within the rights owner circle needs to give their approval. But more than likely, they will give it. They just you know, need to make sure that they give their approval first. Okay, so one stop is always preferable, but easy clear is fine. In fact, if you only own the masters, that's fine. If you only own the publishing, that's fine, or a percentage of both, just as long as you know who owns it what their splits are, 
and how easy or difficult it will be to clear. Um, second, education, educate yourself on the music supervisor. What are they currently working on? Uh, what have they worked on in the past? Um, IMDB, is everybody familiar with IMDB? So you go on to IMDB, um, it's obviously a great tool, but it's not always accurate, especially in terms of the timeline. Uh, often a project is listed as in post-production, which means that's the time actually when the supervisor is on pulling music and introducing it to uh, the director or the uh, production manager. Um, but it could, it, on IMDb, it could be many months after it's already been completed. So the other, um, there are various tools online where you can go and check and see what's in production and what's in post-production. Post-production is usually a time that the supervisor comes in to pitch a playlist to the director. And understand that the supervisor is, the music supervisor is not the final word. They do not make the final decision. That is left to the director and or the pr or production. Um, so if they don't like anything that the supervisor has submitted, the supervisor has to start from scratch and start all over again. Um, so use as many tools as you can to think of the best, um, what did I write here? I don't know what I wrote. Um, what might fit their needs, the best assets that will fit their needs um, at that particular moment. So you also get a better understanding of what types of project supervisors work on. There's a uh, website called TuneFind, T-U-N-E-F-I-N-D.com. And you type in uh, the name of the series or the name of an artist, and they will then pulls up a, a short list of, say, if you've pulled up an artist, um, say Billie Eilish, and it'll show you all the um, different series and films her music has been in. And you can click on that song, and then on the right hand side, it'll show you the supervisor who worked on it and where her so that song was used in however many TV series or films or adverts. Um, it's a great tool that a lot of us in the industry use to get a better sense of what uh, style of music music supervisors are using. Um, okay. Secondly, some of you might have heard this in our, our one-on-ones, generic emails. Uh, how many of you open up emails from someone you don't know? Okay. You do? How, how much spam do you now have in your inbox? I need to know your secrets. Um, in general, and there is always an exception to the rule, uh, most people don't. Um, so don't blast the same exact email out to every person, especially not the first time trying to connect. Um, to demonstrate, as in what I said from the above, research to that you've done your research. You know, so if you're contacting them because your music is similar to um, Phoebe Bridgers um, and you like the use of Phoebe's latest release in this production and you feel that your music is similar, be joyously send out that type of email um, and let them know that you are professional, that you are writing them for a specific ser service um, in helping them to work on their next project. They might not get back to you and most likely they won't get back to you until they're working on a project where they need a um, style of music that's, that's similar to Phoebe Bridgers. There's a, not a lot of rejection, there's just not a lot of communication. Um, if they like it, they'll get in touch. If they don't, you move on. If I don't receive a, a, a quote request or asking for more information af after I've submitted a, a playlist of songs, 48 hours, I move on. Because if they wanted it, they want it immediately. If they don't, they've moved on. Um, so it's not a personal thing, it's just that that music doesn't work for that scene or that project. Um, so let's stay away from generic emails. If you're going to contact me, my name is all over the internet. You've met me here. Hi Pam, I met you at Y Days. I saw you, um, your presentation. It was helpful. It was rubbish. 
um, but I want to write you anyway. Um, so that way I know where I met you or where we were together, and I know that you've invested some time in this, so I will respond. If you just say, hey, I have some music, you want it? <laughs> and I literally, I get those at least once a day, literally. Um, which leads me into not being professional. Some artists seem to think that because we work in an industry of more sneakers than suits, they can say whatever they want, however they want. I've gotten emails from people who only, I've only met once or never met without a subject line and only, yo, I got the beats you need, hit me up <laughs> in the body. Even worse, many take the time uh, take the tone of someone I've known for years, full of emojis, slang, and abbreviations. Um, no. Um, I might be an old fossil, but, you know, it's, it's still a thing of where it's just basic etiquette. Um, this is still a business, and I don't know you, and I would more than likely like to know you if you approach me as a, a professional. And, and, and I will reciprocate in the same way. Um, use proper grammar. Really. I mean, it's 2023. You got Grammarly. Um, coherent sentences. Otherwise, it will seem like you dashed off an email on the run with no real thought um, that went into your writing. Don't act as though your music is a gift, saying outright how great it is. Truly great music speaks for itself. Don't declare that the song is perfect for a certain need or project. It's nearly impossible for you to know for sure what those needs are. Don't ask personal questions or offer up unsolicited personal details about your life. Have you been to my birthday party? If not, it's not likely that I, it's not like that I, I want to hear about um, an anecdote about yours or your kids. Treat a cold email to a music supervisor or a sync agent like a cover letter for a job application, especially if it's the first time you're reaching out. Um, yes, you should so show some spark of personality, um, but more importantly, be clear, cohesive, and concise. Any questions? Because I know we only have like five minutes. I better hurry up. Okay, generic music submissions. Um, again, use the above information um, I, I've, I've listed um, and, and what to include in your approach. Um, does a supervisor, um, and I, I'm talking from a supervisor point of view here, does a supervisor mostly work on shows geared towards teens or tweens? Um, do their credits include every urban romantic comedy released in the past two years? Um, watch some of their films or their TV episodes, and listen to the style of music used. If you have some songs in a similar vein, start with those. Prove you can accommodate what they need. So if I have, or look at my website, um, I have vintage artists and then I have contemporary artists. And you'll note that there are some um, genres I don't represent. And I don't represent them for a reason. So don't think that you can come to me and say, oh, well, I represent, you know, um, hip hop metal um, and think that there's a, I, I need it. If it's not already on my, my plane, <laughs> you know, on my website, more than likely I don't need that style of music. Um, so understand, um, do your research and look to see what kind of music is, is um, uh, supervisor usually works with. There's a guy named Rob Lowry in the States, a uh, supervisor um, who works on like rom-coms, primarily rom-coms and YA. You know, everybody know what YA stuff is? Young adult, you know, so it was kind of Netflix things where, you know, someone's di always dying young and, you know, there's, you know, Fault of Our, t uh, Fault of Our Tears, is that the name of the movie? Sorry, Fault of Our Tears, yeah. Um, so that kind of stuff. So, you know, he needs that sad, melancholic singer-songwriter kind of music. But you wouldn't know this if you don't follow him on Instagram or go and look to see what he's worked on on IMDb and look to see 
what sync agents have gotten their music placed in his projects. So watch TV, watch films, but watch them for the music. How is it used? Where is it used? Why is it used? Sending too much music or too little music. Um, after hearing the above, you may be tempted to send your entire catalog to ensure all potential needs from now until forever are covered. No. Big, big no, no. If you send hundreds of tracks or folders of music to sift through, the chances are high you will be passed over again and again when a supervisor gets the time to actually listen to music. Provide um, enough that the listener can get a good sense of your sound, skills, and strength. Try not to overwhelm. Keep it between three and five. Choose the best of your best. And then when another opportunity comes, send another three or five. Um, you just don't have the time to listen to every song of every album. It just, it's just impossible. Otherwise, that, that would be my job, just to listen, not to actually pitch. Okay, three times. Woo, am I out late? I can go a little longer? Okay, all right. Um, incorrect sub submission format. Don't just send a link to your website, streaming only, or SoundCloud, or the latest YouTube video. Editors cannot um, cut YouTube videos to pictures. So you have to include audio, um, period. And, and that's what we're doing. We're listening to the music and thinking of how will it enhance the visual. Um, do not ever, as long as you live and make music, send files as an attachment. Automatically, your email will be deleted. Um, always send links to things that I can stream and download. So the, the industry tool now is Disco. If you haven't heard about Disco, it's disco.ac. Go online. We swear by it. It was a music storage platform created by music supervisors for music supervisors, which is why we all use it now. Um, so if I like something, I can, I, if I hear something, I can stream it, and if I like it, I can download. Um, you want to make the, the process as simple and easy for me, so that way I'm not having to jump from SoundCloud to YouTube to Spotify to your website. Make it easy, just make it quick, because when I do get a brief, I usually only have maximum a day, but more than likely, like if it's coming from LA, I might have eight hours. And that's, uh, you know, th th that's lucky. If it's from the UK, I might have two or three hours. So if you make it difficult for me to find your music in my search, then more than likely your music will not be in my, uh, my submission uh, folder. Leading to sloppy or missing metadata. Children, children, children. <laughs> metadata is everything. Um, when you go on to Spotify and you're looking up a song or a mood or you know, whatever keywords you do use, um, you type in a word, name of an artist, and that's how you get to see not only that artist, but maybe music that is similar. Everything we do is about metadata. Every time you type in something in a search bar, that's metadata. And if you've written a song and released a song on Spotify, on SoundCloud, on iTunes, without metadata, and key important metadata, no one's going to find your music. So you've just released it to your friends and family and no one else in the world. Um, it is our life's blood. And I can't explain it enough. Um, if we can't find you, it's more likely that, you know, we're moving on. So when you send me a file, if you don't tell me the mood, who you sound similar to, um, your actual genre of music, don't just say pop. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, that's just like saying, you know, music. What kind of music is it? Is it alternative pop? Is it indie pop? Is it dance pop? Is it uh, orchestral hybrid pop? Tell me, because I, I have a brain that has about a million drawers of music, and if I can place you in my head, then I know when I receive a brief where I can, who I can send your music to. 
I gotta really go fast. Um, don't ask for feedback, period. Okay, don't. That's another job. If I just sat all day and gave you feedback. Um, if I like it, it works. If I don't, I'll move on. Uh, if you've been solicited pitch for a specific scene and didn't land a spot, it's understandable to ask uh, what wasn't working. Uh, but be prepared that, it, you know, th as again I said, it's not me or the music supervisor who makes that final decision on what works or doesn't. That's the director, the showrunner, and production. It has nothing to do with me and the supervisor. Mistake number two, following up too often. I had a young lady who felt that every four days she had to check with me on LinkedIn to see if I listened. And that meant that I deleted and blocked her. Um, pitching through social media, mm, not necessarily a good idea. Again, most sync agents, they all have their information on online and uh, supervisors, I wouldn't bother with them, but sync agents, if you have one, um, get their information and, um, let me see here, what did I say? Um, talk to them directly. No, no one likes being bombarded, you know, on Instagram with messages, I got the best beats. Not, yeah, no. Um, I have to go, but I'll be here all day and weekend. Um, I love Edinburgh, and I told my husband last night that I want to move here, so hopefully if I twist his arm hard enough, I'll, you, you can just see me all the time because I'll just be hanging out. If you have any questions, please feel free to walk up. I'm here. I'm open. Thank you.